Stocks just lost a little momentum there as the NASDAQ takes a drop, but we're still positive across the board. Big tech has been leading, and we've seen the market expanding a little bit in the participation of this rally. We've got Tom White here in studio ready to do some trading. We've got Francisco Vito on the line from FM Integrated Alpha. He's a senior portfolio manager and uh, has been here with us over the last uh, year or so, highlighting some of the, your favorite software and uh, hardware tech businesses. Francisco, welcome back to the show. Tell us about morning, uh, thank you. how you interpret the status of this uh, you know, AI theme. Should we be careful dabbling up here at these highs or is the party just getting started? Um, I think you should expect some uh, short-term corrections and profit taking, but if you take the long uh, view, then you should be fine. Uh, and that's what I do, what we do here at Integrated Alpha. So we uh, have a long-term perspective on the new AI, AI revolution. I think it has legs. It's not a fad. It's real. And But regardless, you should expect some volatility short-term, but long-term is a solid investment. Where does uh, NVIDIA fit into a portfolio right now? I mean, should it be uh, a, as big of a uh, part of one's stock exposure as, say, like an Apple? No. Mm. <laughs> Tell me why. No, not, not yet. <laughs> not yet, at least not yet. Uh, it, you know, NVIDIA should occupy, uh, it's one of our largest bets, right, or um, largest positions. And, um, but not as large as Apple. And the reason for that is that uh, largely Apple, you know, at some analysts and some uh, portfolio managers might consider it's its own sector almost, it can move on its own. So NVIDIA is not quite at that level, but it certainly, it might head in that direction. We just have to wait and see. Okay. Uh, what do you think the expectations are now going forward? I mean, is this company gonna have to blow it out of the water every earnings <laughs> going forward from now? <laughs> Uh, I don't believe so. I think if they just meet expectations, they'll be fine. And I think they're well positioned to do that. Um, you are going to find additional catalysts along the way. Uh, today, you know, uh, we, we have chat GPT, which you can all play with. Uh, tomorrow, we'll have something else. And uh, as time goes by, you're going to have different uh, manifestations of the AI technology, how we're interact across industries, and what value it provides to the enterprise. Mm. Uh, the uh, potential for this to kind of spread, as we've seen it start concentrating in hardware, the company is making the chips, they're selling it to companies that are making services and products powered by AI. Where do you think uh, that timeline is to where we'll start to see the services and the products really generate money for you know Microsoft, Alphabet, some of these software companies, and we heard from Oracle that you know, they're going to lay the framework for all these companies to build their cloud services. What kind of timeline are we looking at for these and how do we know if it's working? Uh, we're going to have a very clear roadmap. As I mentioned earlier, you're going to have some manifestations of value along the way incrementally. Uh, you're going to see interaction of different industry. For example, you may have a health care company looking at its records, uh, tying up to somebody like Siemens or, or somebody of the sort who does the hardware and so on, using AI to really uh, you know, uh, control things around the way, manage the logistics behind it. So uh, we're going to have a, you know, incremental little breadcrumbs along the way to tell us that we're on the path. Hmm. Uh, hang with us because we're going to talk some. Three years. Uh, three years. Three years. <laughs> okay. Uh, hang with us because yes. we're going to talk MongoDB a stock I know that you like. You've told us about before, Francisco. I got Tom here in the studio. Uh, Nvidia today. As the market is doing a little bit of a fade, Tom, right. uh, bonds selling off, uh, stocks dropping a little bit. Nvidia's still up, yeah. still the rock. What do the options look like right now? Is it expensive? Is it you know madhouse of like meme traders, or is it you know a four hundred dollars stock? Is that not uh, going to be the crowd it attracts? Well, typically when you see a stock move higher, implied volatility starts to come down, right? A lot of uncertainty goes away. But at the same time, with Nvidia, the way that it's seen that parabolic move up 100, over one hundred and seventy percent so far this year. The options are starting to firm up a little bit. Uh, so I looked at a strategy here in NVIDIA that's going to you know, take advantage of that minimally higher implied volatility. Uh, don't be a hero type trade. If you're still bullish on this name, you feel like you've maybe missed it, option market creates great leverage on a $400 stock. But stay in risk defined in case this, sto uh, this stock does fall, maybe consolidates a little bit, pulls back from these massive gains. So I looked at just selling a simple put vertical to the downside, going out to the July monthly cycle, 
uh, so about 38 days till expiration. Uh, selling the 375 put and then to wrap it up by the 355 strike put. So you're creating a neutral to bullish $20 wide put vertical. You're collecting a credit. I've got 480 here. It's closer uh, above $5 now because the stock has pulled back a little bit. But that credit that you collect on this is what you can make, right? You still have some risk on this trade. The $20 minus the credit that you collect close to $5. But look where your break even is on this, all the way down near $370. So you're giving yourself that cushion to the downside, taking advantage of the, uh, uh, the higher implied volatility. You'll collect more credit on that. But I think, uh, you know, don't be a hero type of trade where you're giving yourself a better probability of success might be the way to play it here. Uh, hoping for some consolidation. You still profit in three out of four scenarios on this one. If it remains here, it goes higher or goes lower, but remains above 375 at expiration. Okay. So still volatile enough to make it more appealing to sell yeah. a spread than owning premium. And uh, okay, so you want to collect it uh, on NVIDIA. All right, makes sense. Right. Uh, let's talk some software here, Francisco. Uh, MongoDB, a company you've talked to us about before, seems like the market's coming around to them. What happens next? I think there, uh, I see some upside left, about 20% upside. Uh, they're currently tra trading at 381, but I think there's still room for more. I think some of their um, technology is still underappreciated by the marker and very much appreciated by the development community. So that's a good mix. <laughs> that's an opportunity. Huge uh, gap up here on earnings. What did you make of that report? Oh, I think it's strong. I think it just uh, goes to the point that, you know, uh, uh, the market doesn't quite understand the capability of what the software brings to, to the table. A lot of it has to do with cost savings, you know, and that's that's usually a good place to look. If it saves other people money, then that's usually a great company. And by, uh, you know, moving your data to a more flexible architecture structure and so on that requires less uh, human capital, it's a great thing. And, and MongoDB actually delivers on, on that promise. Okay. Francisco, thanks for the thoughts. And uh, MongoDB uh, really living up to the expectations uh, that I know you've had for it. So good to put that on. Our radar here over the past year, Francisco Bido at Integrated Alpha, FM Integrated Alpha. Tom, yep. give me the MongoDB trade, what you got? Yeah, implied volatility uh, near 52-week lows, so what type of strategy works in that type of environment? Opposite of the one you just did? Uh, a little bit, but it's more bullish, but you're okay. still giving yourself a nice range and taking advantage of that uh, lower implied volatility to initiate. Uh, I looked at a call calendar in here where you're not expecting exponential gains because the stock's almost up 100% so far this year. So I looked at a short-term calendar spread up at the 400 strike where I'm gonna go out to the July monthlies, 38 days till expiration, buy the 400 call, sell the near-term June 23rd weeklies that expire uh, in 10 days, um, the 400 strike call. You're paying roughly a debit of about $10.30 for that. That's gonna be a risk, just over $1,000. It's bullish because wherever you put that strike is where you expect the stock to go to uh, over the duration of the trade. Uh, if you're paying about $10.30 debit, there's your risk. But look at how wide of a range you have for to be profitable on this one. Uh, break evens between about 373 on the downside and about 434 on the upside. So while it might be a directional trade to the upside, the stock could sit here and you can still remain profitable on it. Those weekly rolls where you buy your short option back, sell the next weekly roll, can expand to six, seven dollars per roll. So uh, pretty good risk reward set up here. Looking for maybe some consolidation. If that grind higher continues, this type of strategy takes advantage of that. All right, okay, a uh, different approach. A little range that you carve out here from MongoDB right. at the highs. All right, thanks Tom.